842-5200 or go to drneilbase.com to learn more at drneilbase.com. This is the St. Louis Composting Garden Hotline with your host, Mike Miller on KMOX. Yes, folks, 1-800-925-1120 or 314-436-7900 if you have questions, concerns, or comments. And Mike, let's head to Shiloh, Illinois, and into Kelly's yard. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Mike. Morning. Good morning. Um, I have two um, eight dogwoods planted about 12 feet apart that have been established about five years. They flower beautifully this spring, and now the leaves are turning brown and curling. I, to me, all the leaves are just a few here and there. All the leaves. Oh. That means they drown. Okay. So, not too much you can do. Especially in a leaf. Uh, doesn't sound good. Yeah, it doesn't sound really good. So, in other words, they're fine, healthy, and everything else, but, you know, they were kind of on the cusp of you know, We had several calls about people who've had plant material that have just gone down the hill this year. But if you think about how much, we've almost had two-thirds the amount of rain that we normally get in a full year in only a couple of months. So that's, you know, probably what has happened with them. Shoot. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, just watching, you know, how the buds look and everything else. So if the foliage all falls off, uh, that's not a good sign. What you can do, though, is go out with your thumbnail and scrape some of the bark off the underside of a few branches and see if it's uh, still greenish. Don't do it yet because you know it's still going to be green because they actually flowered and they were healthy enough to do that. But it is, let's say, around 4th of July, go out and scrape a little bit of bark off and see what it looks like right underneath the bark. And uh, that can indicate if this you know, particular branch is virtually dead. Okay. I appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you. Sure. And, Mike, let's head out to Cree 4. We're going to talk to Norm. Hi, Norm. Hi, uh, Mike. We enjoy your program. I've got a question. We have some 100-year-old oak trees in our backyard, and at the trunk of one of them, it's separated. It looks kind of like a triangle going upwards. And one of our garden companies that's working in our yard said this should be filled with foam. Does that make any sense? Or? No. <laughs> well, what, what's foam going to do? No, if the, if the bark is, you know, if, so we're actually, we're seeing through the bark, we're seeing into the hardwood of the tree. So right. that, and so what I would do is go out there and pull as much loose bark as you possibly can. But, you know, shooting something in there, the, the problem that causes, you know, is probably age, just like all the wrinkles I have on my face. You know, that's because of an age factor, and this is a really old tree. So they're probably at the end of their life. Anyway, so putting some foam, they used to use cement, they used to use this, that, and everything else. It really doesn't help anything. It's so interesting. Pull the bark. You, you mean the stuff that's on the inside? It's like dead. Like yeah, anything. Yeah, anything that's like loose bark. Just pull it loose so you can see. You know, if you've got insect problems and other things, you know, that's beyond just the split of the trunk. Now, it could have been a lightning strike. You know, if the, if the split goes all the way up higher up into the tree. No. But, uh, so it's probably just an age factor. Yeah, it's. Uh the tree looks healthy. I mean, they all with all the rain and everything, right. and the leaves and everything. So, uh, so the recommendation is not to put anything in the. Uh, yeah, just leave it alone. Sometimes that can cause more problems than you know than it can do good. But okay. by pulling again, pulling the, any kind of loose bark off, don't pry it off or anything else. That just let they minimize the amount of problems that potentially could happen with loose bark, where you all of a sudden you're going to have a bunch of insects underneath that, and then make it be causing more problems for the tree just overall. Okay. Well, as always, we appreciate your expert advice. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, Mike, let's head to, let's see, Susan is in Baldwin. All right. Hi, Susan. Good morning, Mike. I have a question about uh, my ostrich fern. I have two large, but kind of shallow pots of ostrich fern, and they've probably been in these pots for about 15 years and have done beautifully. Um, last year they were in need of more dirt. This year they're in serious need of more dirt. And I don't know what to plant, what to repot them in or what to add to it. I don't remember what we did originally. 
Um, someone told me I should use a garden mix instead of potting mix. I have Miracle Grow potting mix. But what is the best thing for me to pot the plant these in? I would say a garden mix is not what you want to do. You want to use potting mix. And what makes you think they need to be, you know, put into a, a, a more soil or whatever? Um, we, we moved last year and they lost a lot of dirt in the move. Oh. They're down to just a very small amount of dirt in there. Uh -huh. They're coming back really strong and healthy. Last year I was afraid to do anything and they came back a little bit. I didn't lose the plants. Right. They came back a little bit. But this year they seem to be back on track with thriving again. But they know but it's very but they are seriously low in dirt. So I feel like I need to add something to them. Yeah, so just, you know, tip them and pull them out of the pot. You know, add some, don't put them in a bigger pot or anything. If they've been successful that long, don't put them in larger pot or anything. And just add some, you know, some potting mix. And like you said, you have the miracle Grow stuff. And just don't pile it up on this where the fronds are coming up out of the, you know, out of the fern or anything else. Just put it under the, at the bottom. Okay, and when you, when, um, there's like a, like a black clump, like a clump that's coming up out of the dirt. Should I cover that? No. That's like the root system. That's fine. That. Just leave it alone. Because a lot of okay. times we cause more problems, especially with houseplants, by burying things that should not be buried. So, you know, Austria, this is Australian fern, right? They're ostrich fern. Oh, oh okay, ostrich fern. they're actually outside. Right. No. So they winter over and everything outside. So they fry. So this is a hardy variety and you have still have them in pots? I do. I do. They, they started out in pots surrounding a large tree at our old house. Okay. And they did beautifully there. So we've never moved, never had moved them or done anything with them. But then when we moved houses, I brought them with me. Right. And that's when we lost a lot of dirt. Okay, so, so just, I would, you know, just, you know, now I understand then you should be using probably like compost topsoil blend and not potting. I thought they were tropical ferns because I wasn't paying that much attention when you said ostrich fern as opposed to Australian fern. So consequently, you want to add organic matter around them, but don't bury them or anything else. Okay, so, so where are those little black things? Do I just lift them up and add dirt under them and put them back or just add it around the edges? Add around the edges. Oh, okay. So don't even disturb them with that. No, just uh, don't fool with them. Okay, that's kind of what I did last year, but this year I'm like, oh man, I've got to do something with them. Oh, no. What you uh, did, your instincts were right on. Okay, perfect. So just like regular garden mix that's hot soil and compost. Right, exactly. And just around the edges. So the, the black clumps, they seem to be coming back this year all on one side of each pot. The other side doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's just, you know, the side that's pushing more growth out. And ultimately, you can just pull them out of the pot and plant them in the ground, but don't do it going into the summertime. Okay. That's why I was afraid they did so well. I was afraid to try them in new ground or right. so they get good and strong again. Exactly. And because if you have, a, like, near large trees, the large tree root systems can really compete with you know, ferns, even if they're well-established older ferns, and it could be, so you might want to leave them in the, you know, just leave them in the pot. That keeps the tree roots out of the pot, basically. Okay, and these pots are, they're about 8 inches deep, and they're probably 22 inches wide. Whoa! Great. And, yep. and so, okay, so just, take, so just take the garden mix and add it around the edges, but don't cover any of, like, the...